There's a dolphin Tamagotchi hacking device? Let's talk about that. Hello and welcome to Modern Broadcast. Now let's talk about some Tamagotchi. Alright, so here we have our flipper box. Um, so this was a Kickstarter and I had backed this project some time ago and my backing got both the white model and black model. This one here is the black model as I toyed around with the white one for a couple weeks now and was testing things out and seeing how it works and uh, decided that we'll do an unboxing of the black one. So let's get started. So here on the top of the box, we have Flipper. Going down to the front of the box, it's the Flipper Zero. It's an electronic pet toy. It's a multi-tool educational device. Educational being the keyword here. Uh-huh, sure. Okay, uh, on the bottom of the box here, we have all of Flipper Zero's uh, socials. I'll have those down in the description below. And on the back, we have everything that the Flipper Zero can do. So sub gigahertz, uh, RFID, NFC, infrared, GPIO, and I button. So let's go ahead and get this open. All right, now that we got the box open, uh, looks like right away they knew there was gonna be a firmware update uh, with the link. So we'll do that in this video. Let's see what comes with the box. It's right up top here. Uh, the box is stacked full. It looks like we have a sticker that says hack the planet of the flipper device. We also have a quick start guide along with a link on where to read the full manual. Next up, we have our USB type C charge cable. We'll also use this cable to connect to our PC and there's some functionality that we can do with that as well. We'll see that a little bit later on. And underneath we have our device. Here is our flipper black model device. Go ahead and see, it looks like here on the bottom we have our micro SD card slot. Looks like we have a little spot to put a keychain. On the front corner of the device, we have our infrared sensor. On top, we have our GPIO uh, pin slots. On the back of the device, we have our I button RFID, and also NFC is in the middle of the device back here. And our USB type C charge port and USB port. So let's go ahead and power on the device. We'll do so by holding down the back button and let's remove this film. So here it is. The screen says, hey mate, press right to continue. First of all, thank you for your support. Kickstarter campaign was insane. Now allow me to introduce myself. I am a T4K0N Cyber Dolphin living in your pocket. I can grow smart and cool if you use me often. As long as you read, write, and emulate, you can check my level and mood in the passport menu. So here we are on the main screen. And if we push this home button, we'll see the main menu where we can look at all the things this device can do. But let's go ahead and get started with updating that firmware. All right, so here we are on our desktop computer now, and I'm at flipper0.1 forward slash update. I'll have a link in the description for any links that we use today. So I'm using Windows, so we'll want to download Flipper for Windows, but you can also get it for Mac, Windows, or Linux. Go ahead and click download here. Once that's done, we can go ahead and open that up. I downloaded an older version when I was messing with my white model, so I'll open that here. And it looks like I have a newer version available, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit update. Okay, once that's done, you'll be prompted to connect your Flipper to your computer through the USB Type-C port. So I will go ahead and do that now. All right, and once done, we can see here that here's the T4K0N device. And I do not currently have a um, SD card installed. So I have a cheap 16 gigabyte micro SD card. I'm gonna go ahead and install that into the device. And now that I have installed that into the Flipper Zero here, you can see it says all data will be saved on the SD card. Now I know that there's other things on this micro SD card, so I'm going to go ahead and format it. So using the device, I'm gonna push the center button here. 
And then I'm going to go to settings, storage, format SD card, and format. Okay, this is now done. I need to unplug the device from the computer. And then we'll plug the device back in. And we see here SD card says 99% free. And there is that update. So I strongly recommend that you just install a micro SD card right off the bat. Otherwise, you're going to have to update twice. You could update without having a micro SD card. It's just the device will have limited functionality and it, it was successful. So we're going to go ahead and hit continue. So now we see that there are no updates. And oh, yes, I forgot. You can actually click this and it'll full screen and it mirrors your actual device on what's happening on it. So you can actually control your device using your computer this way. This is probably how I'll be uh, shooting the rest of this video as recording the screen um, with a camera and uh, with it being so small is quite difficult. Another thing that the Flipper Zero can do is uh, with that infrared is control TVs. So this is the universal remote. Uh, it is quite slow and chunky. Um, it does take a minute to actually go through the power cycles and do the volume up and down. Same with channel. So we're going to show another way um, to do so. We can also learn remotes. So I actually have a retro TV in the game room that I do my recording in. So if I actually grab that remote for that TV and I point it at the infrared sensor, and let's say I hit the power button, um, the Flipper Zero can read that and then mimic and emulate that signal. So here I have my remote. I'm gonna go ahead and push the power button to that infrared sensor now. And as you see, it registered it right away. And we have a couple options here. So we could retry, we could send the signal, just to emulate it right away, or we can save it by pushing right. So I'm gonna save this and we need to name that button. So using the D-pad here, we can name the button that we just pressed. Um, I always think it's naming the remote first and not the button. So I would keep it short, keep it simple um, and just call this like power button, unlike what I'm doing right now. So once you have finished typing it out, um, you now have something called is called remote. So I'm going to go down here to edit and I'm going to rename remote and call this retro TV. All right, we'll go ahead and hit save. And now we see it says retro TV and my really long button name. So that is the power button for this retro TV. Now, if I click this, it will actually turn on the TV. So if we go over to NFC um, and we click on this, we'll click read card. We can actually read our Amiibos for Nintendo. So I have Star Fox here. I'm gonna go ahead and hold it to the back of the device. And once the flipper actually reads the card, it will make a beep sound. And here we see NFC-A, Fair Ultra. And what's really neat is the flipper can actually mimic this. So after reading the amiibo, if we push the right arrow here, we can actually save UID. Uh, this will make it to where we can actually store all of our amiibos on this one device and utilize them with the switch. So there are many awesome flipper programs out there. Uh, this is a GitHub um, that I'll have a link down in the description below if you wanna tinker around with and find other things such as intercom keys, IR dumps, Amiibos, uh, even key fobs for vehicles. Uh, so there's a lot of things that this device can do. Some things that uh, we won't be discussing here, but, uh, Let's go ahead and test out the IR dumps as that's primarily what I use my device for. So after clicking code, we're going to click on download zip and it will download all of those infrared um, codes and just drag this over to the desktop and let's go ahead and unzip this file here. 
All right, once that's done, we need to go ahead and grab our Flipper micro SD card. Open that here, and we're gonna highlight all of these folders, and we're gonna drag them over to infrared. Should only take a couple seconds, and now we see that they're here. So let's go ahead and unplug our micro SD card from our computer and put it back into our flipper. All right, plugging in our flipper device here. There we go. Just gonna make this full screen. And if we push down on the uh, D-pad, we wanna get to our infrared. If you're not there, just push the left and right arrows to get to infrared. And we see that we have our saved retro TV remote and all of our folders that we just dragged over. So we can control things like our Xbox. Um, here are the TVs. So these are different TVs that are automatically programmed in. And some of the uh, TVs have multiple remotes. So you have to test which one works best for your devices or devices when you're out in public. If you click run an app, that will just open up the remote right then and there. If you go to pin, that will mark it as a favorite and it'll be easy access. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit pin on this one. Now if I hit back and I push down now, I now have a favorite section and there's my remote that I've marked pin. So what if you don't want anyone just to have access to this? If you push up on the D-pad, you see here we have lock, set pin and dumb mode. So if we just hit lock here, it's really easy to unlock. It straight up tells you just push the back button three times um, and in order to unlock it. And there we go. That's really simple. Um, so let's go to set pin. Now prepare to use the arrows as pin symbols. And it gives you here, you go from four to 10 arrows. So I'm gonna put in a couple pins. And I'm gonna say up, 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 down, 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 left, right, right, and push the middle button for okay. Got to confirm it. I'm going to do it one more time. Up, 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 down, 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 uh, left, right, right. Okay. So forgotten pin can only be reset with the entire device. Um, there's documents in order to read that. I'm going to go ahead and push next. So remember your pin or write it down because there is no recovering it. Okay. Lastly, you'll see that there is a dumb mode. And if you happen to click on this, it will just say uh, not implemented. Um, this is a feature that just straight up doesn't exist yet. They are planning on doing something with it, but as of right now, um, it, it, it's nothing. So um, don't don't keep clicking it, thinking that something is going to happen. <laughs> um, pushing right on the D-pad here, uh, we have our passport, uh, and then left is to read different signals. Um, which we're not going to get into in this video. All right. So I intentionally bricked my flipper. Um, I made it to where it's not turning on. Uh, it's not responding at all. There's no lights, nothing is happening. So what can you do? Um, if this happens to you, then plug in the device into your computer with the Q flipper app and you should still get response that way as it's in recovery mode. So I'm gonna plug my Flipper Zero into my computer now. And here you can see it is registering um, and it says that it needs to be repaired. Uh, so if we click this blue button here, um, it will start repairing the firmware and hypothetically it should boot back up. So repair, and we'll let this go. Um, I, like I said right now, my device doesn't have a screen on. There's no light indicators. It just seems to be completely unresponsive. Um, but once we do this, that should fix that problem. So uh, here's something a little unexpected is I intentionally bricked my device uh, to show you how to fix it, but it says that uh, there was an error and it didn't actually fix it. So um, this is 
a bit unexpected, but there is um, a link here and under Read Me More that will let you um, kind of troubleshoot it. So let me drag this screen over, and here is the documents. I'll have a link down in the description below on where this is, but uh, let's see, let's click on power, I suppose. No, reboot. And uh, I'm just gonna follow the prompt here to just do a normal reboot and see if that fixes um, the issue here. All right, so I just restarted and uh, yes, okay. Um, that appears to have fixed the issue and the flipper is back working to normal functionality with no loss to my settings. Perfect. So the Flipper Zero has many functionalities that we did not cover and we quite frankly just won't cover uh, on this channel. If you're interested in learning more about the Flipper Zero, I'll have a link down to the Discord below um, where you can read what other people are up to with this device. I will say that this multi-tool is pretty handy. Um, as I pretty much control my entire house and even my vehicle. Uh, it only came with one key fob and I've been able to program the Flipper Zero to uh, unlock my car if I happen to lock my keys in the car. So um, it does have some practical use to it. It also has some questionable use to it. And uh, that is why we won't be covering too much more of the Flipper on this channel. So. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like and subscribe. I know I said that we'd be doing the Odin Pro this week. However, it, it did arrive. I just haven't had time to really play with it yet. So we'll do that next week. Have a great week, everybody, and take care.